ಸಹನಾವತು ಸಹನೋ ಭುನಕ್ತು ಸಹ ವೀರ್ಯಂಕರವಹೈ ತೇಜಸ್ವಿನಾವಧೀತಮಸ್ತು ಮಾಷಾವಹೈ ನಮ ಶ್ರೀ ಶಂಕರಾನಂದ ನಮ ಶ್ರೀ ಶಂಕರಾನಂದ ಗುರುಪಾದಾಂಬುಜನ್ಮನೆ ಗುರುಪಾದಾಂಬುಜನ್ಮನೆ ಸವಿಲಾಸ ಮಹಾಮೋಹ ಸವಿಲಾಸ ಮಹಾಮೋಹ ಗ್ರಾಹ ಗ್ರಾಸೈಕ ಕರ್ಮಣೆ ಗ್ರಾಹ ಗ್ರಾಸೈಕ ಕರ್ಮಣೆ discussing in the 11th chapter the the state of deep sleep in the verse 56 for example it was shown how the jiva in the state of deep sleep obtains as brahmananda as ananda which is brahma that is this jiva the individual self becomes brahma he becomes ananda in the state of deep sleep that's what he becomes that's what he is in the deep sleep state he becomes brahma or ananda how can he become brahma how can a small limited being become brahma because he is not limited so it is said pita api supto apita the one who calls himself as father etc mother whatever in the waking state or in the dream state he becomes a pita free from the idea of father mother and whatever why is it so because this idea that i am father or i am mother or i am so and so that i am limited this idea is born on account of take identification with this body meaning taking the body as a self and that identification automatically drops off in the state of deep sleep therefore what obtains in the state of deep sleep is really my true nature what i find myself in the state of waking or in the dream is not my true nature what i take myself to be in the waking or the dream state is not my true nature but what i find myself in the state of deep sleep is my true nature except i do not know it at that time which we will see but what the text says is in the state of deep sleep this jiva this limited being becomes brahma which is ananda because what made him jiva what made him a limited individual that factor is not there and what is that makes him creates in him a sense of limitation is as we said the identification with upadi identification with the body mind etc and that is what creates in him a sense of smallness or a sense of limitation that identification not being there in the state of deep sleep he he obtains as a limitless being that he really is <coughs> that's what was said in verse 57 pitrutvad abhimanoyah sukha dukha karasahi tasmin napakate tirana sarvan shokan bhavatyam there is long as in the waking state etc <coughs> he took himself to be father or mother meaning identified with the role then all the problems of the role became his problems sukha dukha kara hai he was a mind of pleasure and and pain <coughs> meaning he was a samsari tasmin apagate when that abhimana or identification all that notion of judgment about the self apagate it, it, it goes away in a state of deep sleep sarvan shokan tirna bhavati he becomes the one who has crossed all the shoka or all the grief. <clears throat> so it's nice to meditate on the experience of deep sleep. When we feel depressed, meditate on the state of deep sleep, where there is a total freedom from depression. So imagine yourself as being free from all the complexes. Imagine yourself as being free from all the responsibilities, complexes, worries, anxieties, from all the burden, if you can imagine yourself that's what you are that's exactly what happens in deep sleep state therefore such a lot of time being spent 
because it is something very significant for us to understand because what obtains in deep sleep really is something that is very close to our own true self. <coughs> and the verse 58 told us that not only becomes free from grief or sadness or unhappiness or samsara, but he becomes endowed with or he becomes one with the happiness. So, Shupti Kale Sakale Viline Tamasavadaha Sukha Rupa Mubai Diti Brute Shatharvani Shrutahi. So, Shupti Kale Sakale Viline. When in the time of deep sleep state, everything is merged. My whole world and existence gets merged. <coughs> Like the sun, you know, when there is sun or the moon in eclipse, it's there but you don't see it. So sun is self-shining, imagine, self-effulgent. Even the effulgence of the sun also is completely uh, veiled when this, uh, this eclipse happens. Not that the sun stops shining, but the shining of the sun is not evident. And so also the Atma, the self, is self-shining, but like eclipse that shining also becomes not evident. It also becomes eclipsed. That's what the sixth verse of Dakshinamurti says. Rahu grasta diva karendu sadrusho maya samachadhanat sanmatra karanopasam haranato yobhut susupta kuman pragaswa samidit pravoda samaye yaf pratya bhignayade tasmai shri guru murtaye namaidam shri dakshinamurtaye. Rahu grasta like the Rahu, you know the mythology behind the eclipse, that it is said as though a demon called Rahu, he comes and swallows this moon, or swallows the sun. So poetry is associated with every event, you know, of nature also. And so it is said that this demon Rahu, who is an enemy of the sun and the moon, is, is waiting for an opportunity to grab them and to swallow them. And therefore, when he finds an opportunity, he swallows them. Sometimes he swallows them fully, sometimes he swallows them partly. But then, when we pray, that's the reason why at the time of this eclipse, we pray. So that's the best time for prayer. And because we pray, therefore, that sun of the moon get released from this mouth of the Rahu. This is what is thought. <coughs> it's nice that way. <laughs> so if you think, it doesn't have to be scientific, you know. But it's, it's. And so, uh, similarly also, Maya samachadana, on account of Maya, on account of ignorance, the self also is as eclipsed, and the self normally shines. How do I shine? I shine through my sense organs. I'm alive, I'm shining through my sense organs. I see, I hear, I taste, I touch, I smell. And that's the way the self is shining through the organs of perception, through the organs of action, through the mind, meaning feeling emotions, through the intellect. So this is how the self is shining. And that very shining of the self is eclipsed. So what happens is in the state of deep sleep, this ignorance, which is like the blanket of darkness, completely covers the sense organs of perception, action, mind, intellect and everything, as we'll see subsequently. And therefore, the very shining of the self also is not evident. <coughs> That's what it is, sushupti kale sakale viline. My whole active or evident existence becomes completely merged or dissolved into what we call a blanket of ignorance. Tamasavrataha, the jiva becomes totally enveloped by tamas or darkness of ignorance. Sukharupa at that time, he attains his nature as happiness, meaning Brahman. Iti brutehi atharvani shrutihi. This is what the Atharva Veda, meaning the Kaivalya Upanishad says. <coughs> so all of this discussion, as I said, is to show how Brahma is of the nature of Ananda. And Brahma is that which obtains in deep sleep. So presently it is being shown how in the deep sleep what obtains is Ananda, which is what we are searching for. Every moment what we are searching for in our life is that Ananda. We get a particle of it now and then, but we are not satisfied. The reason why we are not satisfied with the happiness that we now and then experience in the waking of the dream states is because it can never compare with the total happiness that we are experiencing in deep sleep state. As Swami likes to say, when you have, made, when you have experienced a height, then you can never be satisfied with anything less than that. 
Suppose at some point in time you had a four point average, then you cannot be satisfied even with three point nine. When you have taste, taste, tasted, you know, that height, like a musician, like a singer, you know, classical singer. So when he sings at, the, at a, a certain pitch and whatever, if you're not able to reach there, he's not satisfied. And we also, when you, when you tasted at coffee in Tamil Nadu, you know, or wherever it is, which is uh, freshly, freshly ground, roasted, you know, when that fresh coffee is being made, and, uh, when you drink that coffee, you cannot be satisfied by any other coffee. I and mean, this is what Swamiji says, I, I haven't tasted that coffee, but anyway. <laughs> he comes from Tamil Nadu, so he must have preference for Tamil Nadu coffee. But whatever, Colombian or whatever coffee it is. But then, the idea is that when you have tasted the best, then you always compare with that. So when you had, uh, what do you call it, the uh, carrot cake, suppose, you know. Every time you get the carrot cake, you compare with that one. Not like that. Not quite like this. That's why some people always have this habit. Even when they come to the United States, you know, take them to the best parts, you know. And show them the snow and thinking that's the first time they see, you know. And you expect him to be really happy and... So Swami is good, but not like Kashmir, that's all, you know. <laughs> and show him anything and he says, well, but not like uh, Rishikesh, or not like this, or not like that. So you always, when you experience the very best, you cannot be satisfied with anything less than that. The reason why in our life you are never satisfied is because we have test, tasted that best. And what is that? In the state of deep sleep, we have tasted or experienced that ananda devoid of any limitation. Now, in, now and then in the waking state when you experience happiness, there is always some blending of unhappiness somewhere. Some apprehension is there, some worries are there, or some concern is there that I'm eating, all is okay, but how, what is going to do my stomach and my blood sugar and stuff like that. Or, I'm only going to experience this for a while and then it will go away. And some apprehension is always there. None of this is there in the state of deep sleep. And therefore, a total freedom, which is ananda, is experienced there. And that's the reason why we are always seeking that. Until we get that, and we want it, as we said, consciously. We want to have the same ananda, but consciously. So, satyam jnanam anantam brahma. We want brahma, all right, with anantam or anandam, but jnanam. We also want vijnanam anandam brahma. We want to experience brahman, which is not only ananda, but is vijnanam, meaning which is of the nature of knowledge also. So, we want that awareful ananda. But this is what the Kaivalya Upanishad says. That in the state of deep sleep, the jiva becomes one with Sukha, which is Brahma. <coughs> now continuing the discussion from verse 59. Na kevalam evam shuti prasiddha harsaha kintu sarvanubho siddho pitiyaha There is in various statements of the Shruti of the Upanishad, the author has shown how the Upanishad reveals or declares that what one experiences in deep sleep is ananda or total happiness, fullness, not only this is what is declared by the Shruti of the Upanishads, Kintu, however, Sarvanubhav Siddhavi, that is in fact an experience that is known to everyone. Everyone knows that the experience is happiness in deep sleep state. And that is what is said in the verse 59. Sukhamasvapsamatraham Sukhamasvapsamatraham Navai kinchida vedisham, navai kinchida vedisham, it is sukte sukha gnane, it is sukte sukha gnane, param rushati chotthita, param rushati chotthita. The last word of the verse, uttita, supta uttita, the one who is woken up from a deep sleep. Very often when we wake up in the morning, we do not wake up necessarily from deep sleep because whenever we say that a person who wakes up from the sleep declares that he slept very well, Swamiji, I don't find that. When I wake up in the morning, I wake up all kinds of agitations, you know, I don't feel that I had, had a good sleep or, you know, so uh, we don't wake up directly from deep sleep. Often between the sleep and waking there is an intermediate stage of dream and some half a sleep state. So, by the time we wake up, we have gone through all kinds of uh, semi-wakeful states, wherein 
all our agitations and anxieties may be back. And so when we wake up, we already wake up an anxious person, you know. But when we wake up from deep sleep, for whatever reason, when you wake up at two o'clock at night or something from deep sleep, then you experience suprat uttitaha, one who is woken up from the sleep, purushaha, what paramrushati, he remembers. Etavannam kalam sukhamaham aswapsam na kinchit avedisham. This is a standard expression. The etavantam kalam for this much time, he went to bed at ten o'clock and until five for all this time, sukhamaham aswapsam, I slept happily. Na kinchit avedisham, I did not know anything. No, this is what is the, what is always presented as a proof that there is an experience of happiness in deep sleep. And we have to perhaps ourselves also find it someday, that when you wake up after a good sleep, then you are refreshed and you are relaxed, and you say that, I slept very well. <clears throat> but where were you? Sometimes fellow just passes out, you know, even when walking or something, or talking or something like that, some fellows quietly doze off and you know, have fifteen minutes of nap. Where were you? So I don't know where I was. I didn't know anything. So when one is asleep, one does not know anything. So these are the two things that we have to say about our experience of deep sleep. One is, I did not know anything. And secondly, I slept happily. Sukham aswap samatraham navai kinchit avedisham. There I slept happily and I did not know anything. Iti evam nidra kalene. Iti supte sukhagnyane paramshadi. Itevam nidra kalene sukha jnane paramrasadi smarati. And thus, when one wakes up, then one paramrasadi, one remembers. And therefore, when we say in the morning that I slept happily and I did not know anything, that statement is based on my memory. This is a very important thing. That it is memory. When I say in the morning I did not know anything, or I slept happily, what is it? It is memory. It is not my perception or immediate knowledge because at that time I am not sleeping. So we cannot call it pratyaksha or perception. We cannot call it anuman or inference also because nothing, no trace of sleep I obtains at the time of uh, when I wake up. So that statement also does not represent inference. It represents what we call smruti or memory. This is something that is important to understand. Sukha Agnyane, and therefore, I, ex- I display a memory of these two things that, in a state of deep sleep, I did not know anything, and I slept happily. And I can say that, at least, because I know that there were no worries, no anxieties, there was nothing. <clears throat> and when worries, anxieties, or whatever is not there, naturally there is happiness. And therefore, I slept happily, I did not know anything. So two things I remember. I remember the experience of happiness and I remember also the fact that I did not know anything. So the author says, Sukha Agnyane Paramushati. Two things he remembers, Sukham or happiness and Agnyanam or ignorance. The experience of deep sleep is characterized by happiness as well as ignorance. <coughs> Atopi Suptau and this is a universal experience. Everybody says that. Not only a few, but everyone says that. Therefore also we can say, Sutta in the deep sleep state, Sukhamastiti Avagamyate, that there is experience of happiness. There is happiness in deep sleep. This is what we can say, because everyone says that. You might say, I don't say that, Swamiji. Well, <laughs> but I guess from now on, be a little more conscious about our experiences, and you'll find so when you wake up from sleep, a good sleep, you will definitely say that, I slept well. You feel refreshed also, and therefore you feel relaxed. <coughs> and then next one, there is a technical question. How do you say that there is the experience of happiness in deep sleep? How do you say? Because the person, when he wakes up, he remembers that. Now the technical question is, Nanu paramarsasya apramanatva. We say that paramarsa, the smruti or the memory, memory is not accepted in Vedanta as pramanam or as a valid means of knowledge. Only perception is accepted. And 
Any other means of knowledge based on perception like inference, etc. are also accepted as pramana. But memory is not based on perception. Memory is based on some experience I had in the past, which I recollect and therefore that is not accepted as pramanam or a valid means of knowledge. Nanu paramarsasya apramanatvat. But memory is not considered to be a valid means of knowledge. Katham tad balat sukhasiddhi. Therefore, on the strength of the memory, how can you say that in the deep sleep this person experienced happiness? Because we don't accept memory as a valid authority or as a valid evidence. Only eyewitness is the most valid evidence, even the code of law. Ultimately, what clinches everything is the eyewitness. <coughs> if eyewitness is not there, second one is inference. Therefore, you gather all the evidences. And from the evidences, you infer what must have happened. That is the second level. But memory, etc., is not considered to be a, a very strong evidence. In Vedanta, we do not accept memory as, as a valid means of knowledge. Therefore, how can you understand the memory? Say that in the deep sleep, one experiences happiness. Ityasankya. Tasya pramanya bi tan mula bhuta anubhavalat anubhavalat tat siddhiti. Says yes, memory itself is not a proof. However, when me- memory can be, only when there is an experience. There cannot be memory unless there is an experience. I can have memory only of my experiences and not of anyone else's experiences. And I can have memory only when I have an experience in the past. <clears throat> if you have memories without experiences, then it, that may need to be looked into. You know? So if you have memories without experiences, then we may have to consider it some, in some other way. But then memory can be there only when experience is there. That's the reason why this, this therapist, etc., always from the memories that you have, they always project what kind of an experience you must have gone from the childhood. That's why you must have been abandoned. That's why your mother must have treated you like this. That's why your father must have done this, and whatever it is. Thus you can construct a childhood situation based on the kind of impressions of the memories you have in the present. The, because memory can be only when there was an experience in the past. And therefore, even though memory is not a valid proof, but the memory suggests that there must have been experience, it is that experience which is the valid proof. And then based on that experience we say that there is happiness in deep sleep. That's what the verse 60 says. <coughs> Paramarsho nu bhūte sti, paramarsho nu bhūte sti, ityāsī dhanu bhavastada, ityāsī dhanu bhavastada, chidātmatvāt svato bhāti, chidātmatvāt svato bhāti, suham ajñāna dhīstada, suham ajñāna dhīstada. Understand that this text accomplishes several tasks. One is to explain the principles of Vedanta. The nitty-gritties of Vedanta are explained. In that process also, the explanation of the Upanishads also is given. And also, the author takes opportunity to clear a variety of doubts that can arise with reference to understanding our own experiences or understanding what the Upanishads say. So, several things are being accomplished by this text. And so, paramarsha anubhude asti. Paramasha meaning smarana jnanam, that the memory can be there, anubhute eva vishay bhavati. Memory can be there only when there is an experience. So the very first chapter we encounter the statement, yahi smritihi sa anubhava purvika. A smriti or the memory must necessarily be preceded by experience. There cannot be memory unless there is experience. And then we say that in the deep sleep, there must be experience of happiness because I have memory of that when I wake up. Na anubhuta vishayi na karana memory of something which I have not experienced. Iti asmadheto ho tada meaning sutta anubhava asi and therefore we say that in the deep sleep there must have been an experience of happiness. Iti vagam mele. Now an interesting question is asked here. You say that there is an experience 
Now that is being analyzed further. You say that there is a deep sleep, I mean there is happiness in deep sleep, and ignorance in deep sleep. And you say that one experiences that happiness and ignorance in deep sleep. And because of that experience that one says when one wakes up in the morning that I did not know anything and I have, I was happy, I slept happily. So that is now being analyzed here. That question is Nanu Suptau Manas Sahitanam Jnana Karananam Vili Natvad. So it's now in the deep sleep. There is no means of experience available to you. See, in the waking state, when we experience variety of things, all of our experiences are through what we call sense organs. An experience takes place when my sense organs come in contact with a sense object. Thus, with eyes when I see something, with the hear, ears when I hear something, or whatever. So, only the sense organs of perception are my means of gaining experiences. And sometimes I can gain an experience in my mind also. And for certain experiences, the sense organs may not be involved. For example, experiencing various emotions, etc., then the sense organs are not involved, but definitely mind is involved. So, one thing is clear, that we can gain an experience only when either sense organs and or mind are there. Either sense organs and mind or mind alone. These are our instruments of experience. Like I require a telescope to see something that is far away, or a microscope, to see something that is very small or minute, and similarly also, I require sense organs and mind, or mind in order to gain any experience of pleasure, pain, or whatever. So question is, in the deep sleep state, neither sense organs nor the mind are functioning. Suptau manas sahitanam jnana karanam virinatvat. In the deep sleep state, sense organs are not there, meaning not functioning, the mind also is not functioning. All of them are completely absorbed. All of them are absorbed, or all of them merge, you may say, into what we call the darkness of ignorance, into the cause. So, as we say, deep sleep state is the causal state, and the waking and dream states are the effect states. So, we have a lump of gold, and from that lump of gold we make various ornaments. Again, when all the ornaments are melted, then again they become a lump of gold. In the lump of gold, the ornaments are potentially there, but not evidently there. And therefore, that lump will be called the causal state of the ornaments. And when you actually make the ornaments, that is what we call the manifest or the effect state of the ornaments. And similarly also, what happens in deep sleep is that all our memories, all our experiences, and everything, it doesn't get destroyed but it all merges into its causal state. And therefore, it is not manifest or evident. Just as in a lump of gold, the ornaments are not manifest. They are not evident. They are very much there, but not evident or cannot be differentiated. And so is in the deep sleep state. My personality is very much there, but cannot be, is not evident or cannot be differentiated. Therefore, the deep sleep state is called the causal state. Therefore, the, the ignorance is called the causal body. And from the deep sleep, where all the personalities in an unmanifest state, when that personality becomes manifest, that is what we call uh, partially manifest, the dream state. Fully manifest, we call it the waking state. <coughs> and so, however, in the deep sleep state, when the mind and sense organs, which are our means of gaining experiences, when those very means are not there, kasam anuvasiddhi, how can you experience anything? In the deep sleep state, how can you experience anything? Because the very means of experience are not there. This is the doubt, and this is a very important doubt, and this is a very important thing also to understand. So the question is, kim sukhanuvaho sadhanam nasti di uchyade? Ajnana anuvaho sadhanam va? Okay. When you say that there is no means of experiencing anything in the deep sleep, are you saying that you don't have any means to experience the happiness that obtains in deep sleep, or the ignorance that obtains in deep sleep? What is it that you cannot experience? Or, when you say you don't have means to experience, experience what? The happiness or ignorance? Then, we say no. That happiness that obtains in deep sleep, 
does not require any means to experience because it is self-revealing. Just as in a, in a room, the chairs and tables, etc. are not self-revealing and therefore they will require this light in order to reveal themselves. But just as this light does not require another light to reveal. And similarly also in the deep sleep state, what obtains is the self. Self shines in its own light, which is light of awareness, and which also is nothing but happiness. And therefore, the happiness that obtains in deep sleep is self-evident. Therefore, it is sukha as well as it is sat, chit and ananda, existence, awareness and happiness. So that is a happiness, that is self-revealing happiness. Even the waking state also, the happiness reveals itself. That's why, how do you know that you are happy? I know. Because happiness is evident. <coughs> so the second line of the verse says, Chidatmatvat Swatobhadi Sukham Agnyanadhi Stataha. Chidatmatvat Swatobhadi Sukham. So Sukham or the happiness or the deep sleep state, Chidatmatvat, because it is of the nature of Chid or awareness, therefore Swatobhadi, it shines by itself. <coughs> so Prakasha Chidrupatvena. Sukhasya karana anapekshatvat. Since sukham or the happiness in the deep sleep is self-evident and therefore doesn't require my sense organs of the mind to illumine that because it is self-illumined. Therefore, it is directly experienced. <coughs> How about ignorance? Naddhutiya. Even ignorance also doesn't require mind the sense organs for experiencing. Saprakasha sukhabaladeva tad avarka jnana pratiri siddhehe. Since the Atma is there, that illumines the ignorance also, and therefore ignorance also is known in the light of the self, in the deep sleep. Tataha suprakasha sukhad agnyanadihi agnyana suprakritir bhavadi. And therefore, it is the light of self, which is the nature of happiness, which is self-evident, in the light of which the ignorance also is known. So ignorance also shines, even in the waking state also. The ignorance also is illumined by the self, because I am aware that I don't know something. Do you know Chinese language? I don't know. How do you say that you don't know? I know that I don't know. So I know that I don't know. That means even the ignorance also is something that is known or ignorance is something that is illumined by the self. And therefore, in the deep sleep state, what obtains is happiness and ignorance. Happiness is the very nature of self. Therefore it shines. And ignorance is something that is illumined by the self, and therefore that also is known. <coughs> therefore, the answer is that in the state of deep sleep, even though conventional means of knowledge, namely the sense organs and mind, are not there, they are not required because the happiness that we are talking about is happiness that is the self. In this, you see, the happiness that we experience in waking itself is a state of mind. In deep sleep, however, that happiness is nothing but the self itself, which is self-evident. Nanu saushupta sukhasya svaprakasya sukhatvebi brahmananda svayam bhavet. You see, the one thing is, to study this text, we must really be interested in all these kind of details. That is the kind of this text, I know. And so, the subject moves very, very slowly. We don't even know that he's moving at all. Swamiji, since three days all you're talking about is one thing alone. Where is this? It doesn't seem any difference at all. It seems that verse by verse after verse you're talking about the same thing, but not quite the same thing. The slight differences are there. And so if you, are in, if you have cultivated that interest of, uh, of knowing, as we said, the various details involved in that, and that is how an experience becomes very clear. What Vedanta does it, it just analyzes the experiences. That we have day-to-day -day experiences. In order to understand the truth, we do not require a special experience. Truth being all-pervasive, it is there evident, it is there in every experience. It's just that we have to understand the experience. Here, the experience of deep sleep is taken up for analysis. It's a complicated thing to understand in a certain, in certain ways because it is not a conventional experience. In conventional experience in the waking state, I'm aware that I'm experiencing something. In the deep sleep, I'm experiencing something and I'm not aware. That's what is complicated about it and that is what in fact brings about all this discussion. So continuing, the question is asked, Nanu, Saushukta Sukhasya, Saprakasya Sukhatvevi, 
ब्रह्मानंद स्वयं भवेत इति अत्रोक्तम ब्रह्म स्वरूपम न संभवति इन फैक्ट दिस इज व्हाट वी रेड इन एडवर्टेंटली यस्टरडे ऑल राइट यू हैव एस्टैब्लिश दैट द हैप्पीनेस ऑफ ट्रेनिंग इन डीप स्लीप इज सेल्फ एविडेंट सो इन दिस डीप स्लीप happiness it is self evident obtains but how does one become brahma you talk about happiness how do you say that the jiva becomes brahma in the deep sleep state iti atra uktam brahma swarupam na sambhavadi man abhavat how do you say that happiness is brahma a simple question then here the author explains the statement from bruhadarnika upanishad so nice thing to know is what we call truth is happiness also that's all so everybody is searching for truth all right truth is not something that is dull or not something that is inert so truth the scientist is looking for truth in matter or in some cell or some place or the other but truth is not confined to matter not confined to a cell not confined to a given thing it is something that is all pervasive limitless is not inert it is self revealing self evident is not dull it is of the nature of happiness So all happiness and all awareness, and you can call it freedom. You can call it love. Whatever you call it, that love or freedom or beauty or happiness, that alone is truth. And that is Brahman. And that is self. And that is myself. That's what Vedanta is saying all the time. Hard to believe. Are you trying to tell me that I am beautiful and I am free? I, I mean, that's the last thing I am willing to accept. But that is exactly what it is. And very boldly it is being said that what else you think about yourself. is all false that's called mithya you think that you are bound that you are limited that you are no good etc all of these ideas are mithya meaning they are all false and you understand the false of those ideas and that's all that is being done in in different ways <coughs> so bhagavadana ka upanishad says vijnanam anandam brahma brahma or god if you want to call it or the self is vijnanam of the nature of awareness or intelligence and anandam of the nature of fullness or happiness ityadi bruhadaranyika vakyasya sadbhavat that this bruhadaranyika very clearly says that you cannot say that that happiness is not brahma happiness is indeed brahma <coughs> you know in taittiriya uh, upanishad also there is that so called arithmetic of ananda or happiness they call it ananda mimamsa a mimamsa or a there an inquiry or is arithmetic of ananda so what is brahmananda what is the extent of ananda that brahma is and to explain that brahma ananda that brahma is is limitless it is explained that imagine that the ideal happiness of human being is one unit and multiply that by 100 and you get the happiness of one singer musician multiply that by 100 you, you get the happiness of a divine a celestial musician and multiply that by 100 you get one unit of one in pitruloka multiply that by 100 you get one unit of ajana deva multiply that by 100 you get one unit of karma deva multiply that by 100 you get one unit of deva multiply that by 100 you get one unit of indra multiply that by 100 you get one unit of brahaspati multiply that by 100 you get one unit of prajapati multiply that by 100 you get one unit. that is brahmananda so 10 raised to 27 you know you go ahead with this or whatever so idea is it is limitless but then just to give us an idea of what is extent sometimes that ananda is compared to ocean sometimes compared to a lake you know or ocean without any boundaries so vijnanam that is brahma that is god or that is a self which is vijnanam anam it is intelligent intelligence happiness existence <coughs> so verse 61 says brahma vijnanam anandam brahma vijnanam anandam iti vajasane inah iti vajasane inah pathantya tasva prak पठन्त्यतस्वप्रकाशम पठन्त्यतस्वप्रकाशम सुखम ब्रह्मैव नेतरत सुखम ब्रह्मैव नेतरत ब्रह्म विज्ञानम आनन्दमिति वाजसनेनः पठन्ति वाजसनेनः मींस 
ది బృహదారణిక ఉపనిషత్ బిలాంగ్స్ టు ది వాజసనే శాఖ దట్ ఇస్ ద శుక్ల యజుర్వేద సో దిస్ పీపుల్ బిలాంగ్ టు ది వాజసనే శాఖ ఇన్ ద బృహదారణిక ఉపనిషత్ దే సే బ్రహ్మ విజ్ఞానం ఆనందం దట్ బ్రహ్మ ఈజ్ విజ్ఞానం ఇంటెలిజెన్స్ అవేర్నెస్ ఆనందం హ్యాపీనెస్ స్వప్రకాశం సుఖం బ్రహ్మైవనేతర్ అండ్ దీ సే దాట్ the happiness the self evident happiness that obtains in deep sleep is brahm and nothing else the self evident happiness that one experiences or obtains in deep sleep or one becomes in deep sleep in fact is nothing but brahman you should not even you know one becomes that one gets merged into that that itself is brahm and nothing else now a very interesting question is asked ననూ అనుభవ స్మరణయో ఏక అధికరణత్వనియమాత్ సుఖమహమస్వాప్సం న కించిత వేదిషమిది చౌసుప్త సుఖ జ్ఞానయో విజ్ఞానమే శబ్దవాచ్యన సి యూ సైడ్ దాట్ వెన్ ఎ పర్సన్ వేక్స్ అప్ ఇన్ ద మార్నింగ్ నెన్ ద పర్సన్ సేస్ సుఖమహమస్వాప్సం ఐ స్లాప్ హ్యాపీలే న కించిత్ అవేదిషం ఐ డిడ్ నాట్ నో ఎనిథింగ్ దిస్ ఇస్ వాట్ ద పర్సన్ సేస్ in the strength of that statement or the memory you call it memory on the strength of that you say that in the deep sleep he must have experienced happiness and he must have experienced the ignorance but anubhava smaranayo ho ek adhikaranatva niyamat the rule is that the memory can only be for a person who has himself gained the experience so i can have a memory of the experiences that i have experience and and not someone else has experience but however the person who wakes up in the morning that fellow is not there in deep sleep state so this question are you trying to say when you say that when someone says in the morning that i slept happily and i did not know anything it is a saushupta sukha agnyana yo that in the deep sleep there is uh, sukha and agnyanam happiness and ignorance who says that the one who wakes up in the morning and who is that fellow in vedanta we call him vijnanamaya the jiva another name for him is vijnanamaya meaning when i wake up in the morning my intelligence or my mind is fully functioning therefore i am called a waker so i would not be called a waker when my mind is functioning when my intellect is functioning when my sense organs are functioning then i am called a person who is awake so in the waking state i am the one who is identified with my intellect i am called an ego on account of identification the intellect and ever i the jiva is called vijnanamaya who is identified as vijnana or or intelligence intellect <clears throat> there is the one who says that he experiences he, he experiences happiness and ignorance He is Vijnanam, meaning one identified as the intellect. So, therefore, that fellow should be awake in the deep sleep state also to experience the happiness. See, if you say that the memory and experience should always belong to one locus alone, meaning the one who has the experience alone can have memory and not someone else, then the one who has the memory in the waking state is a jiva, the full-fledged Vijnanam, or the one identified as the intellect. then you have to say that in the deep sleep state also he was the one who was experiencing the happiness so jivena smaryamanatvat tasseva tasseva sukhadi anubhavitratvam vaktavyam never you have to say that tasseva that the experience of happiness and ignorance in deep sleep must also belong to the same fellow who wakes up in the morning same fellow means what the waker the jiva the one i functioning through the intellect he must be the one who must have experienced that happiness and deep sleep state that's what you to say then alone memory is possible then what is he but we know very well that nobody is aware in the deep sleep state even though we experience at that time we are not aware see when i wake up in the morning i am a self conscious person when i wake up in the morning i am a self conscious person a person is conscious of myself and conscious of things around me that's the reason why in the waking state i am conscious of all my experiences but in the deep sleep state i am not a self conscious person 
So, the one who remembers in the morning is a self-conscious person. The same self-conscious person also must have been experiencing the happiness in the deep sleep state. Is that so? The answer is no. Why is it so? Tadupadehe vijnyasya agnyana karyasya agnyana vilinatvat That consciousness, the self-consciousness, which is a function of the intellect, that function is not in the deep sleep state because the very intelligence or intellect is completely merged in its cause, namely ignorance, and therefore the self-consciousness is not there in the deep sleep state. In the deep sleep state, I do not know myself, nor do I know anything other than myself. In the waking state, I am aware of myself as well as aware of things around me. So it is a self-conscious person in the morning who says that I experience happiness and ignorance. So you have to accept that the same self-conscious person who was there in the deep sleep state. Our answer is no, because the self-consciousness, namely intellect, is completely merged in its cause, namely ignorance. And therefore, this Vijnanamaya, or the self-conscious being, is not there in deep sleep state. That's what is said in the verse 62. Yadajnanam tatralinau, yadajnanam tatralinau, tau vijnanam anomayau, tau vijnanam anomayau, tayor hi vilaya vastha, tayor hi vilaya vastha, nidra gnanam chasaivahi, nidra gnanam chasaivahi. Yet agnanam, that in a deep sleep, there obtains what we call agnanam or ignorance. How do we say? Na kinchit avayade shamedi smarana anyatha anupatya gummimanam ya agnanam asti. That I wake up in the morning and say, I did not know anything. I could say I did not know anything only when there was a total absence of knowledge in the deep sleep state, otherwise I could not have said. Had there not been a total lack of knowledge or absence of knowledge in deep sleep state, I could not have said in the morning that I did not know anything. So my statement in the morning reveals or or is an evidence of the fact that there must be ignorance in the deep sleep state. Yet jnanam tatra linau so vijnana manomayo. In that ignorance, tatra min tasmin ajnane, in that, in that ignorance, tau, these two fellows, yeah, we have, see, Panchadasi has discussed in the earlier chapters, and the Taitari Upanishad also we find, the personality, a human personality, being described as consisting of five seats. The Annamaya, Pranamaya, Manomaya, Vijnanamaya, Anandamaya. Annamaya, the self-identified with the gross body. Pranamaya, self-identified with the vital functions. Vital function means my uh, functions are what we call the vital energy. Like the prana, breathing and hunger and thirst and what not. Then manomaya. Manomaya is the self-identified with the mind. Vijnanamaya, the self-identified with intellect. Anandamaya, the self-identified with happiness. So this is how the human personality is defined or, or is, is, is analyzed. We have these five-fold experiences and therefore there are these five-fold identifications that take place. Either I am identified with my gross body and then I identify myself with a man or a woman, tall, short, fair, black, dark, whatever. When I identify with my white layer sheets, then I declare myself hungry, thirsty and so forth. When I am identified with my mind or emotional personality, then I call myself happy and happy. When I am identified with my intellect or the thinking or intellectual personality, then I call myself the ego is there, the doer is there, the asserting person is there, the knower is there, then I know this. And when I am identified with my, the personality is what we call the ignorance, then I call, that is the Anandamaya Kosha where there is no unhappiness at all. So, that is what is referred to here. That in the deep sleep state, my mind and intellect, both of them merge into ignorance. Therefore, that manomaya and vijnana, with intellect, I know. Intellect is a knower, 
and the mind is the means of knowing. So mind is always behind the sense organs, with which I gain various experiences. Therefore, mind is called karana or instrument. And the knower is the one identified the intellect. So intellect vijnana maya kosha is called the karta, the knower. And the manu maya kosha, the mind is called the karanam, the instrument of knowledge. It's not very important, but that's vijnana, vijnana mano maya, the vijnana maya meaning the knower, and mano maya meaning the, the means of knowledge, both of them. Pramatru, pramanatvena prasiddhau, vijnana maya is pramata, and the mano maya is pramanam. Vijnana mano maya vilinau. Both this mind, in short, the mind and the intellect, both of them are completely merged in that ignorance that obtains in deep sleep state. That's why we just explained it is a causal state. It is not that the mind and the intellect are destroyed. The mind is there with all its emotions and everything. The intellect also is there with all its knowledge. In the deep sleep state they are not destroyed, but they just merge into their cause and therefore their functions are not there, they are they're manifest. They are not manifest. <coughs> Vijnana manomayo vilinau Vijnana tvadi akaram parityadya karana rupena avasthitav Therefore, giving up their manifest state, they obtain there in what we call the causal state, where the memories are not manifest, evident, the knowledge is not evident, the emotions are not evident, all of them emerge in what we call the causal state. Like the, the ornaments, the golden ornaments, when they are melted, how they get merged into what we call the lump of gold, which is the causal state. Ataha tadupadikasya na anubhavitrutva mirivhava. Therefore we cannot say that it is a self-conscious being which we call the vijnanamaya. He is not the experiencer of the deep sleep. Otherwise, it would be nice. Suppose I was conscious in deep sleep state, that would have solved all the problems. Nothing else would have been required. Suppose in the deep sleep state, I was conscious that I am experiencing this ananda. That's all. You won't need anything else. You need not wake up also. Even if you wake up then also, you know that deep, that's a real thing there, you know. That's the reason why once you take something like drugs and water, even experience some of those things, every time the mind wants to go back there. Or any kind of an experience which has been enchanting, the mind wants to go back. Because there is an awareness in the deep sleep, Deep sleep is the very best experience, except that that awareness is not there. Therefore, the self-conscious being is not the one who is present in the deep sleep state. Tayohohi vilayavastha nidra. Hi asma tayoho vijnana manomayoho vilayastha vilayavastha nidra. It is because what you call sleep is nothing but the total merger of the mind and the intellect. And therefore, that knowing and feeling faculties are not there. Otherwise, I would have felt that happiness. I would have known that happiness. The knowing and the feeling faculties are not there in deep sleep state. And therefore, the one who wakes up in the morning is no one and feeler. The no one and feeler says that I experience happiness. But that fellow is not there. He is completely merged into his causal state. <coughs> vijnana virati suptihi. And therefore, what is supti or deep sleep? When all my vijnana meaning, all my knowledge of my mind, has completely resolved into its causal state. Ida abhidana tarhi nidrayamaya vilanavita vaktavyam. So then you should say that the mind and intellect are merged into deep sleep. Says so now they are also merged into ignorance because agnyanam cha saivahi saiva nidra vidvadhi agnyanam iti vyavasriyate. Meaning the deep sleep state itself is also the state of ignorance. That is a total blanket of ignorance. In short, in the deep sleep state, the mind and the intellect, the thinking and the feeling faculties, both of them are completely merged into ignorance, which is their cause. And that's the reason why the thinker and the feeler are not there in the deep sleep state. If he's not there, then there is another question. Nanutarhi saushupta sukhadi anuvavakale asataha vijnanamayasya prabode kasam tatsmartrutvam. Hey, wait a minute. If the knower and the feeler that I am is not there in the deep sleep state, then when I wake up, I am the knower and the feeler, how can I remember something which I have not experienced? So the waker is not there in the deep sleep state. It is the waker who has the memory of happiness. But you say that the waker is not there in the deep sleep state, then how can he have the memory? 
Vijnana Mahesya Prabhode Katham Tatsmar Pratham. So these questions arise. You think that these questions, these fellows are side bypassing, but they are not bypassed. Every question is taken up here. So how can you have a memory? How can the waiter have the memory when the waiter is not present in deep sleep state? Iti Ashanke. Vile Avasthayam Abhi Tatsvarupa Nash Abhavad. We have to say that the waker, as we said, does not get destroyed in deep sleep state. In the deep sleep state, the mind and intellect. So identification of the mind and intellect is what we call the waker. When self is identified with the mind and intellect, it is called waker. But the mind and intellect are not completely destroyed. So the waker is not destroyed in deep sleep state. The waker is there in a potential state in the deep sleep state. The mind and intellect, all its memories, etc., are in a potential state. What they call latent state, or potential state, or the causal state. And therefore, in the deep sleep state, there is not a destruction of the personality, nor the destruction of the conscious being or awaker. There is merely a merger into its causal state. And therefore, the very same fellow is present in the deep sleep state, in the latent state, or in the causal state. Stat sarubanash abhavat vilaya avastha upadi mad anandamaya rupena anuhavitratvam Therefore, it's interesting now how the Vedantic teachers explain our recollection in the morning of having had a good sleep and having not known anything. Same person who says in the morning that he experienced happiness, the same fellow was there in the deep sleep state except that he was then in his causal state. And when he wakes up, he wakes up in his manifest state. So the same person was in the deep sleep state in an unmanifest state, and the same unmanifest fellow becomes manifest in the waking state. So it is not there that there are two separate persons. It is there are two separate states of the same person. A causal state and then a manifest state. So what he experiences in the causal state is what he recollects in a in the manifest state, in the waking state. <coughs> And so, as Anandamaya, as he called in the deep sleep, he experiences, as Vijnanamaya, as he is called in the waker, he recollects. And therefore, it is quite okay. Therefore, it is established here, and it will be further established, how the, the experiencer and the rememberer, if you want to call it, both of them are one alone. Because the same fellow is in deep sleep in another state. Okay, we will continue tomorrow. Let me finish the prayer, yeah. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachyade Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishyade Om Shanti 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 Shankaram Shankaracharyam Keshavam Vadarayanam Sutra Bhashya Krutau Vande Bhagavanta Punaf Punaha Ishvaro Guru Ratmedi Murti Bheda Vibhagine Vyoma Vadvyapta Dehaya Dakshina Murtaye Namaha Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Sri Guru Namaha Hari Om